So everyone, welcome to the Art of Podcasting panel. Thank you for sticking it out to the very end to wait to be here. We're really happy that you're here. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> it's a very intimate session. What's up, y'all? I know, right? <laughs> uh, quick raise of hands. Who here actually does a podcast currently? Wow, that is quite a well, bit of you. That's pretty cool. Who well, is who is yeah, thinking about <laughs> well, all of us up here, of course. Who currently is looking into doing a podcast but doesn't currently do one? All right. Nice. Ooh, so that's another half. Yeah. Who hasn't done podcasting at all, doesn't care, and is just here to really see what's going on? Yes. <laughs> okay. What's up? Okay. A few people. Lies. That then is a few lying. people. All right. Cool. So we got a good mix of audience. You sit back and enjoy these next hours. Okay. <laughs> Chill. These next hours. Well, no, we're going to keep talking. Hours <laughs> As in typical podcast fashion, I cannot account for any tangents we may or may not take, so be ready for anything, especially with the group that we have up here. So, introductions first. For those who do not know, I am Dust Storm. Uh, Dustin Pegru, I run a podcast called Podtacular. It is a weekly Halo podcast that covers all Halo content. Wait, that's also another lie. It is not weekly. It's like three times a week. That's how you get to 350 <laughs> million podcasts. It's not that many. Okay, fine, 350. <laughs> hey, well, you got the itch, you got to scratch it, I understand. <laughs> oh, he scratches a Sometimes lot. Sometimes you got a podcast. <laughs> As you can see, it's going to be hectic. <laughs> to my immediate left is Lindsay Tuggy from Rooster Teeth. Hello. <laughs> yeah. And Internet That's Box. You, Abby, what's up? And Internet Box. She is the former head producer and audio producer for the Rooster Teeth podcast and The Patch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next to her is Kelly Dunlap, a.k.a. Goose Checka from Hello. Griff Ball Hub. I don't, is this thing really on? I think it's lying. Oh, I got to get really, really, really close. Get really close. Get into my mic. Okay. Really Hello. intimate, just like Hello. text. Uh, Tell the audience. <laughs> she is the community my manager for Griffball Hub and the host of the Griffball Hubcast. Anybody listen to the Griffball Hubcast? Yeah. Two, three people? <laughs> three people out of the whole I can't, group. I can't really? at least two. Do you really listen to it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? I listen to lots of stuff. <laughs> And, of course, people. all the way at the end, we have Jonathan Cerna, a.k.a. Roadblock, from Glyph Shark, a.k.a. Hi. or what used to be known as Late, Late Night Jenga Jam. Late Night Jenga Jam. And the podcast. And the yeah. podcast. The podcast. He is the, of course, he is the announcer and producer for Glyph Shark. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, everyone is here kind of wondering, why podcast? Why even bother with um doing podcasting in the first place. You know, I have that question a lot of times when I'm sitting down editing. I ask that question to myself a lot. <laughs> why? It's true. Yeah, why? <laughs> Usually for me, when it's a, a live feedback, I'm like, whoa, uh, someone's gain was put way too high, or someone <laughs> popped out their XLR in the middle of a sentence. Sweet. So, of course, podcasting, you could come from a different a variety of different uh, areas, whether it be professionally, whether it be as a fan, but you usually do a podcast because you have a certain set of ideals that you want to share with somebody or you are part of a community and you feel that your opinions may be valued by other community members. So having a common interest, uh, being one, wanting to be able to collect and share ideas of a similar topic, genre, whatever it is you want to take a podcast for. Um, if you're doing it from a professional scene like Lindsay here, you may want to be, be pr um, promoting a brand or service. So. Um, for Lindsay's case, Our it would be Rooster Teeth. jokes at Rooster Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for for uh, Goose Check, it would obviously be Griff Ball. For me, it's Halo. For Jonathan, it's uh, the RT community. So uh, Stuff and things. Stuff yeah. and things. Random things. And, of course, if you happen to be a subject matter expert, if you're deemed by peers within your collaborative group as a subject matter expert, you might want to do a podcast to help kind of share knowledge around the community at large. So. Or you can do all three. I mean, that's kind of why we branched off into the patch. And I know we talked about that before, but obviously we got a lot of audience members that were just focused on our gaming-related topics. And for we got a blend, obviously, in Rooster Teeth. You go anywhere again from dicks to science to gaming. <laughs> um, but uh, we had a big call for a lot of audience members that were like, oh, we like the episodes where you just focus on gaming, so we decided to make that its own independent podcast. Now we have the patch. Yeah. And we'll get into why doing two different podcasts might be important. Yeah. So... Let's uh, start with some of the basics. Let's kind of hit the high points off the start. So getting started, the five W's and the H is kind of a good mantra to go off of whenever you're trying to figure out how to do something, why you want to do something. So the who. The who of your podcast would be your audience. Who do you want to talk to? Who is the target demographic or group of people you're trying to uh, get information out for, be a collective or collaborative source for information? The what. 
is finding out what you want to talk about, where is the niche that you want to fill, if there's a certain void of content that you think a podcast might fill, where is that, and kind of expand on that opportunity. Uh, win, be regular, and I know Goose is looking over at me glaring right now with how many podcasts on some weeks we come out with. Yes, regular schedules. <laughs> we do do a podcast on Thursdays. Oh, I know, it's right so we do podcast. have a regularly scheduled show. We just okay. do extra shows. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's very regular. It's just sometimes more regular than <laughs> you think it might be. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of us do it once it. a week, it's, it's okay? A, it's Not a everybody. It's regularity. It's regularity uh, with, uh, with a little bit of help, like fiber. Yeah. I was going to ask, too, as far as, like, adding extra podcasts that you were talking about. I know you guys have a weekly schedule, but in adding, do you do that because there's an audience response and they're like, hey, we'd like you to do more, or there's a subject that comes up, or is it just, like, whenever we feel like it? With the podcast, what we started doing is, uh, way back in the day when Jang Jam first started, like, they, the way we did it, there was, a, we could schedule a call, and we could end the recording, but we couldn't end the broadcast, because, like, uh, as long as someone was connected to the call, the broadcast was going to continue. So that kind of uh, that kind of evolved into people just talking about random stuff, and then Jeff and Barb uh, really kind of took over that area for a while. That like 30 minutes right after the show, when we decided to kind of reinvent the show and do things uh, uh, more live and with a slightly different way of doing, which we'll get to in a sec, we were like, well, we kind of still want to do the podcast because we wanted to keep the show focused on whatever we were talking about, be that a guest or be that uh, a topic, and the podcast we were just kind of like. So how are you been this week? Oh yeah, that's great. Yay, butts. So, <laughs> and, and that's that's the reason why we've kind of done that. And sometimes uh, it, there'll be a night where I'm like, guys, I just can't do a podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, good night. But there'll be other times where I'll want to chat with people, and uh, that's a really good way to do that. So it's kind of like a, a, our laser, well, not laser, but our focus show is our main show, and then the podcast is just kind of something extra. So you have something that's kind of consistent, though. That's what a lot of people really attract to just making sure that there's a consistent schedule and there you have predictable content that's coming out. Well, I know for us, one of the big things, when the Hubcast first started, we're talking you know, a couple of years ago, uh, the people running it, they would uh, do, they would record it and then it would take like a week for the content to come out. And then by then everything's old news and everybody already knows. And then maybe we would record in two weeks and then maybe we would record in a week and a half and right. people just didn't know to expect it and now that we are we've been doing every week for the past three yeah thank you three years every single thursday night for the past three years we have people that show up we have people that participate we have i mean amazingly enough for griffball which is such a tiny little audience we get thousands of downloads i mean okay i, I Please don't say anything, Lindsay. I was, oh, I was gonna. Okay, <laughs> serious. I was like, yes, go on. Gonna snicker like. <laughs> no, what? Yeah, okay. Our friends here. Our friends here. It's chill. We get that in our spam filter. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean that's been incredibly helpful for our podcast. Is that people come to expect it? Like we didn't do one this Thursday, and the the hate mail that came in, I can't even. You know, where did it go? It'll be, it'll be back <laughs> next week. So that's the only downside to having something regular is that when you miss it, people, people get, notice. They get a little angry, but I'd rather I I like to think of it as passionate. They're very passionate about what we're doing. And They're that, caring fans. Yeah, they they, just, the the <laughs> fact that they realized it wasn't there makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah, better that than not noticing that it's not yeah. there. Oh, wait, <laughs> you, you were gone to RTX for oh, three days? We, we didn't even <laughs> notice you weren't here. Yeah, and we had the similar scheduling. Obviously, you are saying repetitive and making sure that you are there available for your audience. I mean, the biggest thing is uh, the live stream. We depend on that, obviously, and that's why we've kept our time the way it is because a lot of our West Coast audience and Central audience is when they tune in at 7.30 Central Standard Time. So we've set up that we are going to be there, and obviously with the uh, podcast before we went to live streams on Tuesdays, we would, or sorry, Mondays we would record, uh, and then Tuesdays we would have the podcast come out. So, you know, everyone can expect that even though it's a little bit later than the day, depending on what work we have obviously we're busy people but that day there will be an episode of the podcast so people come back yep all right so the next w on the list is where so this is depending on where you want to publish your content what whether it be via a blog or a website or for certain special situations whether you, you might want to have someone pay for the podcast if it's like if it's a real professional tutorial type thing but we're not about that kind of stuff here wait, we're wait, all people, about community people sharing. will pay for me to podcast i could get paid to do that Sometimes. Depending on what you're talking about, yes. Anybody want to pay for Griff Ball? <laughs> Do we have any Griff Ball philanthropists? In the... I'll take eight. <laughs> <laughs> Give me those two. Eight you episodes, guys. that's it. That's, that's well, I saw right. the guy with the Griff Ball. If he can afford that, he could, he could, you know, that could, I could help with that. <laughs> you know, I was looking at me like, no, no, it wasn't me. Don't. No, no eye contact. 
sponsor me with a change in your pocket right now. Yeah, please. Do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. The next W is why. So why is it that you specifically want to do a podcast? What's the motivation behind you wanting to fill some kind of void, wanting to put your opinions out there? Because I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Why are people laughing? I don't Boosh. I don't get it. I mean that's <laughs> right? <laughs> Pick up the mic, drop it again. <laughs> right. Leave the room. <laughs> I'm out. You usually want to be open minded <laughs> when you have a audience and they give feedback, which we'll get into in a little bit. But I'm right. We'll get into that in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and For some reason I just thought of the word inexorable. I don't know why. That, that's a pretty big word. I love that word. If you could define it for me, that would help me a it little bit. It means unstoppable. Can oh, I have the, uh, the language of origin, please? And can you use it in a sentence? Okay, back to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to tangent. Yes. And, of course, the last W or for the five W's and H is the how. The hardware and software that goes into recording, producing, and publishing your content. So now is the point where we really dive into the, the deeper stuff. Not quite as deep, but some of the more specifics of podcasting. So one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing when it comes to podcasting is the interest that people will have in your content, finding a niche where your podcast will actually thrive. So there's plenty of podcasts out there. There's tons of different Halo podcasts. There's tons of different podcasts about um, politics, news, other sources of media, games, videos, and all that stuff. But what you want to do is if you're starting out with a podcast, you want to find somewhere where a podcast will fill a void in a certain community or content gap. So for um, the Griffball Hub, they specifically focus on Griffball. So having a podcast that kind of supplements that, follows their league, is something that really shines on them. We are the only Griffball podcast. You want to talk about finding your niche? We cornered that market. Yeah, you dollars. cornered and monopolized. Yeah, well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with Monopoly. It's a perfectly valid strategy as long as the government's not listening. <laughs> it's a pretty long game, though. Yeah. God. Only if you play it the wrong way. Did you know you're only supposed to go around the board once? No. And then you start auctioning off all the properties? It blew my fucking mind. <laughs> I thought that was one way to play. I thought there were multiple ways to well, play. Well, no, in the instructions, that's how they want it, but they realized that children were crying because <laughs> they didn't get to actually buy all their properties, and so parents were like, oh, well, you just go around and around. You're learning the sadness of real estate early on in life. <laughs> exactly. I think that's important. I think that's important. But no, obviously about um, finding your niche, that is so incredibly important. You know, whatever you like, whether it's red versus blue, whether it's halo, whatever it is, you know, knitting, why would I want to listen to your podcast? What do you bring to the table that would be of interest to me? You know, for Griffball, like I said, we've got a monopoly. So if you want to listen to a Griffball podcast, I don't know why anybody would, but there's one stop shop. But for like Duststorm here, there are literally hundreds of Halo podcasts. So why I listen to his is he tends to have really cool guests like me. So, <laughs> you know, and one, one among many, I might add. Well, yeah, but you know, they, they're not here. So, no, they're not. But, so that's one thing. And I mean, if you've got a built-in community like Rooster Teeth does, I mean, they listen because, you know, they love the people and we love sharing those stories. You know, hearing about the squirrel in Gus's mailbox is hysterical and I laugh every time. <laughs> I mean, that's the funniest <laughs> thing ever that he's harassed by a squirrel. You know, and so if you've got a podcast and you've got ideas and thoughts to share, just find a way to deliver it in a way that's unique, that nobody else is doing. Maybe say it in a Scottish accent. I don't know. But have something on it that makes it unique and makes it your own. So that way people will have a reason to listen to you rather than everybody else. And I think going off that a lot of it, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but obviously personality plays a part. You can talk about the same subject material, but, you know, people turn into the Receive podcast to see Gus getting mad about something. It could be the same subject as another podcast spoke about, but it's Gus. Um, so a lot of it's being yourself, too, and bringing that personality to the table and what you have to offer individually and what your sense of humor is and what your style of speaking is. And, you know, obviously I speak really quietly, too. So on podcasts, I sound like this, but, you know, people like that. So. <laughs> It's a nice counter to Gus, who's yeah, very loud and screaming <laughs> into the mic. Jonathan, you want to add anything to that while we're kind of just chatting away over here? Oh, God, I'm on the spot. Uh, <laughs> you're the only one yeah. not to comment yet. Shut You're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, one of the things that, uh, that is, is really hard, at least that I've found, is trying to include as many people as you can, but keep it, keep it together. And I think we're going to touch on that for a second. And I've always found that... Uh, one of the nice things about our show is that we 
it was Jack originally doing Late Night Jenga Jam, uh, Jenga Ship, and then it was, he added Lauren to add the, hey, what's going on in the geek world? Or, and it was everything from, hey, this video game is coming out, to, oh, hey, did you know that they found that uh, rubber is actually a metal? Or, or some, something stupid or, or, or science-y like that. Like playing then, Monopoly the right way? Like playing the Monopoly the right way, exactly. And then they brought me on, I'm, I'm really not sure why, but uh, I... I'm on the show now, and I think the three of us make a really, really good team. So that's that's what's kind of kept us going is the three of us just kind of working for each other, and uh, and it's it's been a lot of fun. That's that's why I keep doing it is because I have a blast every single week hanging out with those guys. Uh, next thing, kind of up there, is methods of presentation. So there's two different ways you can really do, go about doing this. One is topical, where you're specifically focusing on one specific area or free form. So I think for the Griff Ball Hubcast and for Podtacular, those are more topical. They sp specifically focus on a certain area or a certain topic within a community. Have you listened to the Hubcast? <laughs> yeah, you mostly talk about Griff Ball. Mostly. Is mostly, Most, like, 51%? Is that yeah. That's technically Slightly mostly. more than half. That's okay. Okay. Really okay. I mostly. guess if we're going, like, 51 49, then I guess we mostly talk about Griff Ball. But <laughs> and, then of course, and then, of course, Freeform, which is more of the Rooster Teeth and Glitch Shark style. Where it's we talk about anything that decides to come up on the show, right? I mean, and, and when we have when we have a guest like when we had Jack on, uh, it, it was still Jenga Jam, but we had him on and we were ta and we talked. I don't think we talked about video games at all. All we talked about was football. And after the show, he was like, "Man, this was awesome because normally people ask me about video games, and don't get me wrong, he loves talking about video games because well, they kind of pay his bills, but." Uh, he really got liked the chance to talk about uh, Texas football, talk about the Cowboys a little bit, uh, just talk about kind of sports in general. And that's when we bring a guest on, yeah, it's great if we can talk to that guest about whatever they're uh, known for, but we're really just interested in a conversation. Like if we have, uh, if we have Nico from Trocadero on, yeah, we're going to talk to him about, uh, about his music a bit, but we're also going to ask him, so when was the last time you had a crepe, you sur surrendering French monk, uh, surrender monkey? Uh, because he's French and he's awesome. Did you just say surrender monkey? No, I didn't. I, I thought you were saying sir as in, like under, and I, I wasn't quite sure what we were getting Goose, at. I've been drinking for like three days. Give me a break. <laughs> I feel you. What have you been drinking for three days? Uh, I don't know. What have I been drinking for? I don't care. Bleach? Because uh, <laughs> that, that red there looks like the, the blood of my enemies. The, the double Cuervo at the stage the other night was a bad idea. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, another thing that's important is maintaining flow. So making sure that whatever you're talking, whatever you're discussing, you kind of keep on topic. You make sure that the content is interesting. It maintains uh, the focus of the audience that you're trying to target. And of course, tangents are one of those things that just happens. And of course, you've seen all the tangents that we've had so far. And I'm sure that ones coming are going to be bountiful. Yeah, little, little tangents. Yeah. You haven't seen anything yet, Dustin. No, I, I'm, I like I'm well prepared for a massive <laughs> tangents that's going to throw this panel tangents. way off. <laughs> So maintaining flows is uh, another big point. Um, the good and bad tangents, of course, small, quick little tangents are pretty good. Bad tangents are ones that completely deviate from your main line of content, something that will take you off for about five or more minutes that people that listen to you just aren't interested in at all. So it's kind of hard to do that for shows such as the Rooster Teeth Podcast and Clip Chart, um, but for podcasts like myself and sometimes the Hopcast, <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, it can, uh, going off, we talked about personality as well and how people are interested in hearing what, uh, I think it's interesting, uh, tangents to decide uh, when people get a chance to talk about their personalities as well and people like that. And that kind of plays into a lot of the tangents on Rooster Teeth is people end up telling personal stories. And even though we are freeform, we usually have a list of subjects that we're going to talk about, like a video game release or a video that we put out or some event that's happening. And we do stray from those. And people love it. People love when we go on like a 15 minute tangent again about like Gavin's dick and what happened to it this weekend. <laughs> I don't think anybody yeah. loves that. Oh, I mean. man. They're all, you haven't seen the tweets. <laughs> no, I hide. I hide. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there are instances where that's fantastic and great for comedy, and people love that. But then there's other instances that we've had many times where we're like, okay, let's wrap up this story. Or like, um, it usually happens when people decide that they're going to take over the story and make it about uh, that story for the next 30 minutes. And it's not really about interacting anymore. It's about this person telling what they want to tell. So as long as you keep the interactivity and, I don't know, keep it about personality, not so much about, hey, I'm talking right now. Everyone shut up and listen. I think tangents are okay. Yeah. Yeah. As far as, like, 
uh, more topical podcasts from the research I've done from what I've seen. A lot of things that you're really looking just for content specifically to that topic. It's important to try to at least stay somewhat close to the topic. It's it's nice to go on tangents a little bit because it keeps the, the show a little fresh. It doesn't make it stale or anything. But big tangents that really go off what you're normally talking about on the podcast is something that can actually deter audiences away. Okay. And I've seen that from trends sometimes on our podcast when we go through um, – talk about some things and people are like, we want you to talk about this more. And we've seen dips in certain areas. Yeah. Well, I know just from experience from listening to podcasts, I'm sure we can all think about times when we've heard a podcast and we're like, oh my God, won't they move on or won't mm-hmm. they please just stop? Yep. Or, I mean, not picking on Lindsay here, but I remember <laughs> a couple of Rooster Teeth podcasts. They, Say it. They had interviews <laughs> afterwards with uh, developers. I think it was Bioware, one of them. Yeah, we have Bioware. Mm-hmm. And it's that's best. something that's so beyond my interest level. I just, I stopped the podcast. Obviously, I still, oh, yeah. I still subscribe and I still listen. I just cool. want that to be out there. But that's an example of something that's so outside of my interest level that I actually stopped listening to yeah. it. And it's actually funny you bring that up. That is another inspiration for why we had the patch in general. A lot of our uh, guest podcasts, it seems like a lot of people were really turned off by one, the additional cast member they're not familiar with. It's not Rooster Teeth, but still someone they know online, but that's a whole different dynamic. It's a person being thrown into a group where normally these people have known each other for years or months or work together, and it's just a little bit of a different feel. And because they're guests, obviously we're going to focus on what they make, or in the case of Bioware, we're going to focus on the games they produced. And uh, a lot of our guests were game producers and game developers. So that's, again, why we started The Patch, because people were like, oh, why don't we just have a whole podcast about gaming if you're going to talk about it the whole yeah. time? <laughs> yep. That's a, a way that something that might not be the best thing right off the bat, you know, because if it turns people off, the way you can kind of just maneuver it into something else that's good. Yeah. So, and yeah, The Patch I, is doing great, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that pretty much uh, covers most of the things. Uh, one last thing on this is content always trumps production. Um, You could have a crappy podcast with crappy audio quality, um, but more times the content that you come out with, if it's good content, um, people uh, really like the opinions that you have, like the stuff that you're talking about, they're going to come back and listen regardless of how bad it may sound. Um, To to an extent. Yeah. Granted, having a good, having a a well-produced podcast does help quite a bit and it helps keeps those niche um, customers or listeners that you may be looking for, but the bulk of your audience, they're going to really be focusing on the content that you put out for your podcast. For example, on the Hubcast, we have one of our regulars. His name is Rally Fox, and he lives on the uh, th- the West Coast, and we're on the East Coast, so our podcasting time is his dinner time. So he, you can routinely hear him eating on the podcast, which is not my favorite thing, and it's sometimes... Which is a no, by the way. Yeah, I would discourage that, but we've actually, again, taken something that people didn't like, and we turned it into a game, and we now have Guess What Rally's Eating. (laughs) So (laughs) so people will actually try and guess what he has. And So, again, trying to take it... I would... Don't eat on the podcast, please. Rally, stop. I'm watching you. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, stuff like that. And for our podcast, we, again, you know, Cal and I, or two of them, we live in the same place. We've got someone in New York, we've got someone in Texas, and we've got someone in California. So it's all done over Skype and streamed on Twitch. And a lot, most of it have external microphones, like, on our Macs or just, like, little stand-up ones that we bought for five bucks. So the audio quality is not the best. It could be better. But the thing is, we still have people come back, and they enjoy it. Because of the content that we're putting out, not because we have like a three hundred dollar Yeti mic <laughs> dust It's not three hundred. The thing is, like, it's big. It's like, big. Yes, we'll get to that though. Okay. Master yeah. control. Going off that too. I mean, I've, I've been asked to talk mostly about Rooster Teeth, but going on, uh, just internet box related to. I mean, people started liking that content as well. I remember when Barbara used to Skype in and she was on her phone, and that's how she recorded the podcast. I'm like, oh, okay, phone quality, cool, <laughs> or like some uh, cheap in in uh, computer mic, like we talked about, but. People like it, and even though it wasn't the best of quality, especially compared to now, I work with Rooster Teeth, and there's obviously a lot of money put into the equipment. I'm like, oh, this is so awesome. But um, people still liked it regardless. Yeah, she's going to nerd out in about three slides, just to warn you guys. I am, sorry. (laughs) Talk a lot about tech. (laughs) Prepare yourselves. Uh, So the the second biggest thing in my book of podcasting is engaging the community. I think all of us will agree here that community is a big part of why we podcast in the first place, why we continue to do the podcast and why podcasting is is kind of important is because of the community that supports it. So of course you need to integrate with your community. You need to be able to bring community assets into your show on a variety of different things. This could be covering community content that if you have a forums or if you have people that comment on your show, bringing those in, talking about those um, submissions or uh, comments that are on the show. 
uh, reach out to the community, have people actually come on the show, um, have guests uh, on the show. I think everyone here has had a guest at some point on their respective yep. podcasts. Definitely. And uh, reaching out to, um, depending on where your podcast lies, uh, celebrities within your community, other um, community leaders. So for myself, reaching out to everyone else was a community outreach that if you're doing a podcast would be something that is highly advised because it also gets your name out there. And that, speaking of names, for uh, smaller podcasts like mine, name dropping is highly encouraged. For example, if I say, hey, you know, I was r looking over Nuclear Taco 42's new Griff Ball map and it looks great, and word gets around that Nuclear Taco 42's name was dropped on the podcast, guess who's going to go listen to the podcast? Nuclear Taco, Taco 42? Yeah. <laughs> okay. For example, I'd never even heard of Internet Box. I don't know how I'd missed it. But a friend tweeted at me and said, Hey, Goose, your name was dropped on the Internet Box podcast. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, she did say we talked about you, actually. <laughs> yeah. And so I downloaded it, and now I listen to it. So name dropping in that way. Not like, well, I sat next to Lindsay at the panel, so, you know. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> that kind of name dropping, not so much. But being able to shout out to your community as much as possible is a great way to get new people to listen to your podcast or at least try it out. Because let's face it, everybody likes hearing their own name said. There's nothing wrong with it. I have a master's in clinical psychology. I promise <laughs> it's not narcissistic. You're okay. It's normal. I mean, it's too late. She's already in your head. <laughs> in that same sense, too. I mean, it's rewarding for fans. I mean, uh, with we always say, yeah, well, uh, my brain, my brain is gone. Um, we have intros for uh, Rooster Teeth podcast whenever we are just audio, and now we put them at the end of our live streams. But those are fans submitted, so now they get to see themselves in the credits, or we would mention them in our journal entries, like, hey, thank you so much for the submission. And I've I've received messages personally. They're like, oh, thank you so much. Awesome, my friends. They listen to it. They listen to my intro. That's awesome. They didn't really care about it before, but since I was in this episode, they wanted to see it, and now they watch too. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So it's it's nice it's a nice reward as well to reward your fans in a way by mentioning them because you're like hey check it out we know that you're listening thanks and as far as community outreach uh, one of the very first times I was doing a convention I was at PAX and Allison Stroll from 343 was there she's one of the like the main people at the studio that makes Halo which a total fangirl moment for me and I was so nervous to talk to her because I wanted to ask her some questions about Griff Ball of course and. I was like, can I ask you something? She was like, oh, yeah. I mean, nothing, a nothing, was it? nothing asked, nothing gained. So basically, if there is someone in your community that you think, I don't want to say he's on a higher level than you, but someone that you maybe look up to, just reach out to him. I mean, on podcasting, this is a relatively new thing. There's nobody here. I mean, even Major Nelson likes to write back and say things, and he's like, you he's know. He's really responsive. Very yeah. responsive. So, I mean, you might want to start a little smaller, build up a little bit of an audience, but don't ever be afraid to reach out to somebody. The worst they can do is say, I'm sorry, I just, I don't, I can't right now with the time doesn't work. But otherwise, you're going to end up with people on your podcast like Dust or you'll have a panel like this with all of us, or again, not being narcissistic, just as an example. Um, so yeah, I, I would encourage everybody, reach out. It, does it never hurts. Everybody likes to be asked, hey, do you want to be on my podcast? Well, at least for me, that makes me really excited to do right. that. And if you start putting your name out there, you're going to have other communities also notice you and start asking you to be on their show. Mm -hmm. If your value, if your opinions are valued, and uh, if you have a large listener base, you're going to have people telling other people, "Hey, go check out this podcast." And eventually, it goes up the chain, and then your podcast explodes. Well, again, with the, the name thing, like you know, when we heard, uh, not that we already don't listen to the Street podcast, but we heard them drop the name Griff Ball Hub, our site, when they were listing their vendors. Every single person in my community got an email from me saying, go listen to the Rooster Teeth podcast we mentioned. And ev <laughs> well, not everybody, all the good kids did. And so people that didn't even listen to the podcast before, maybe, were now aware of it. So you know, it, it's just a great way to hook the community by reaching out, by sharing, um, and by name dropping as much as you can. And that's not going to be something that just happens if, if you don't do it. You have to put some amount of effort into publishing your podcast, making sure that you promote it in certain areas. And there's kind of right and wrong ways to do it. Um, I'm not going to go too much into details here because there's lots of other things we need to talk about, but trying just submitting your show as a news item to um, community sites, like I know for Halo, HBO is a good place to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's definitely websites out there for a lot of different communities that you'll probably, if you're doing a podcast or wanting to do a podcast, kind of fit the topical areas that you're looking at and will take user com uh, user submitted content and will promote the heck out of it for you. Um, a, lot, just, a lot of the bigger organizations really like to see community efforts, and when they see something thrive, when they see passionate people, they will bump that up and they will promote the heck out of it. Or even something just as simple as a tweet, like, hey, mm -hmm. would you mind retweeting this for me? 
Uh, there's actually a book out, and it, it's like the science of Twitter and how to increase your followers. Not that I've read it or anything. But uh, <laughs> I'm just trying heard to increase about it my followers. My, my uh, Twitter account is at Goosechecka, by the way, just in case anybody wants it. And G O O. Here, here. I, here, here we go. It's on the first Shit. slide. It's on the first slide. It's on the first slide. Um, I don't, what was I talking about? <laughs> I got it's right really up excited. There. Um, <laughs> But yeah, just asking for like a retweet. Because I know people will post stuff. I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then some people will ask, hey, at Goose Checker, or, hey, at Griff Ball Hub, I made this thing. Could you please retweet? Insta, almost instant retweet button. I'll make sure it's not, you know, horribly offensive or, you know, supporting the New England Patriots or something before I do it. <laughs> but, you know, I'll almost, if you ask for a retweet, I would say nine times out of ten, you're probably going to get it. But if you don't ask for the retweet, much, much less retweetage happens. And the worst thing that can happen, if you do ask for it, it just doesn't get done, which does, it's, it's... It doesn't hurt you, because... No, it doesn't hurt yeah. you. And the only thing that you can get from it is a beneficial gain. Mm -hmm. um, last thing on the slide before we move on is, um, once you have an established podcast, or if you're doing a new podcast and you want to enter this realm, be careful if you do, but is live streaming. And that gives an, a whole new element to... Doing That's a, a whole nother ball game now. That's a whole shit. Ball. <laughs> you have movies. live audience interaction. You have people that can come in and provide you live content for your podcast. Something that really is kind of an innovative thing now, and it's it's still pretty young. Is live streaming for podcasts, even if it's just audio, doing something just as as special as that, and then doing live giveaways. Sometimes is a big attraction to the podcast, and more people will actually come listen live and really participate in the show, and it gives another avenue for people to come uh, really interact with the show. Yeah. I know we talked about it before in our individual meetings, but that's a huge point of interactivity now that we obviously didn't have with our potty or potties with our uh, audio <laughs> podcast. Sorry, everyone. Um, but of we course, would, there's the right, occasional you know. Freudian slip. <laughs> that's actually the new podcast we're having. It's oh, the okay. potty cast. Yeah, let me, let me write just that down in the bathroom no for an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how does that make you feel? It's right, that'll be pretty out in, uh, in a month, right? <laughs> Yeah, but uh, before I would I would read journal entries with Gus, or we'd read comments on the podcast, and based on what people uh, told us, we would adjust appropriately, whether it be uh, technical issues, maybe this person didn't sound quite as good as they should over this microphone was kind of off, or subject material wise, like hey we like this, hey we didn't like this, and we would uh, retroactively kind of fix it after the episode. But now in the middle of it, um, people have tweeted in, they're like hey so and so's mic sounds a little iffy, or the stream's kind of buffering, or something, and we can address the issue when it's happening, and even make it a part of the show. Sometimes it's funny to watch people walk across the camera and go fix something and they're like oh hey what's up but uh you know that's a whole nother thing that we really didn't have before and then we can improve on the spot also uh they directly affect our material like what we talk about so we'll get a tweet and someone says oh why aren't you guys talking about this and that creates a tangent so it's a whole nother level of being able to reach out to our audience and actually have them be able to reach out to us so and if you if you are live streaming and you find that your viewer numbers is low please don't get discouraged and i don't hey, know, i, I don't know if it's really the low. same for you guys across the board but we'll have about 15 people in our live stream which is awesome we're so excited about that but we have thousands of downloads so the, the at least for us the ratio between people who are there physically in the moment watching it live and the people who download it there's a huge skew there i don't know do you it's guys find the same cool. thing yeah we have uh, sometimes like 10 12 listeners maybe peak up at 20 sometimes mm -hmm. Um, but we've had historically tens of thousands of downloads for one yeah. show. Yeah. Our main pull still is downloads in, in comparison. Yeah. It's like it's not obviously not the same number, but yeah. we started off low in what we wanted, but now we've back up to a pretty decent amount. So we're the, th happy. the thing about doing um, a recorded show versus a live show is po people tend to listen to podcasts while they're at work or while they're driving or while they're transpor uh, transporting from one place to another. And Happy. you have, you have um, just that piece of the, of the podcast really thriving right now and the live stream aspect there's some people that um, depending on when you do it too are there they're willing to go on but like for me I work during you get the showing of the patch so I have to download it later yeah. so it, it's um, as far as live streaming goes for any people that are new to podcasting or are thinking about doing a podcast try to stay away from that a little bit see where your podcast feels with the community that you're trying to get to and then once you have an established fan base, once you have regular content putting out, then you can 
start investing time into doing live stream content. Yeah. And there are obviously variations of live streaming. You can do a live stream of audio, um, but especially if you're going to add a video to your element, that's a, it really is a different ball game. When we put uh, everyone on the set, they were obviously had to be aware of the camera placement. That's a whole thing they didn't think about before. So people are aware that they're being filmed. And it does, it does put a little bit of added pressure, knowing that you not only have to sound good and keep the story going, but you have to make sure that everything looks OK. Mm -hmm. So and, and that can affect your actors and your performance. So it's a whole other thing to think about. Right. Uh, can try to skip through these as quickly as possible because we do want to do Q and A. So the next thing is kind of um, audio ambience, the sound that your podcast actually makes. Uh, there's a couple of big things that really go into this. Uh, one of them, which is kind of the room dynamic where you're doing your podcast. It's not uh, these aren't really big impacts to it, but there are little things that can really adversely affect the quality of your show if you're uh, trying to really. I enhance your podcast and that what? I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about where we record. We record in our yeah, living room. Yeah, I know. I know. And the best thing is that, you know, I have an external mic on my MacBook Pro, and that's how I record my audio. And I have a cat who's really obnoxious. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go back and listen to the podcast. You can hear Simon. Yeah, that's the next slide. Time. It's just the soundboard. Don't worry, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> totally the soundboard, not my cat freaking out. Or when they get into fights, or uh, we did have one podcast where the cat actually vomited. Oh, so you Jesus. can hear like. Ugh. <laughs> and you hear us going, oh, no, you know. So, yeah, ambiance. Uh, yep. Watch out for your background noise. Yeah, so <laughs> I actually had one where I was, uh, my wife was out of town, and normally I record in one of the spare bedrooms, uh, to, you know, kind of stay away and keep quiet. But she was out of town, so I'm like, okay, sweet. I can take it out to the living room. I can watch TV. The football game's on. This is going to be great. Uh, there was a severe war weather warning that night, and I actually had to stop the stream because the sirens outside my house were going off for the tornado sirens. And I'm like, okay, guys, um, I have to go because my house might get blown away. <laughs> Hopefully, I remember that podcast. I'll see you in an hour. <laughs> I'm glad you're still here. <laughs> it, it happens more often than I'd like. <laughs> well, what, no, actually, the worst was, so I, I said, hey, okay, well, I'm going to keep the stream going, and I'm just going to, you know, get my stuff ready to run down to the shelter if I need to. And so as soon as I get up, I kick out the, uh, the power thing for my switch, and so the whole thing goes dead. <laughs> oh, God. And so I, I got a, I got a, got a couple dynamic, of texts, that's where that like, falls, uh, by the way. Are you all right? <laughs> still there? I'm like, no, no, I, I'm, I'm just an idiot, just... Uh, keep, uh, I'll, I'll see you guys next week. I, I swear, and uh, it, it worked out obviously. But yeah, I, I, it didn't take a tornado. It just took my foot. Yep. So, kind of going off of that, room dynamic, um, kind of whether or not your room is echoey or not, uh, depending on where if you're maybe recording in the kitchen versus your bedroom, something that's insulated. A room with carpet is a lot better than a room with tile floor. Kind of those little things. Um, Reverberations and whatnot. Exactly. Uh, background noise, like. Roadblock <laughs> thing. <laughs> I was going to go with John as an example, but if you want to continue using the cat vomit, I will. Uh, well, we're getting to slide. soundboards. That's why I'm getting warmed up. Oh, okay. Exactly. Okay, we're getting to soundboards, yes. Um, voice clarity is, is one that's kind of hard to nail down. It, also, it depends a lot on your, the microphone that you're using and depends on just kind of the techniques that you use for podcasting. And of course, the microphones like these, you speak straight down on top of, and there's other ones that you speak straight in front of. So it's knowing your equipment and knowing like actually how to podcast, and there's plenty of resources on that. Audio assets, um, music. Uh, usually intro music and outro music is a good uh, flair. It gives a good, nice uh, input and output to your uh, podcast. But Can't during the show, be very careful with what you do with sound effects and soundboards. One or two is typically okay if you have a regular recurring segment that uses uh, sound clips that you use to open. Um, like I know on Major Nelson Radio, they usually have sound clips that they do for Xbox 101 and other uh, segments that they do. Those are fine, but once you start getting into the soundboards, heavily using those and having constant background noise, there's one podcast in particular, the Spartan Ops podcast. Sorry, Mitch, I did call you out. Um, that they have a continuous loop of music in the background, which drove me nuts. <laughs> So you need to use those very, very sparingly. And that goes for intros, too. Sorry, Lindsay. Um, I know there's some podcasts that have to have, like, a minute of music 
into their intro, that drives me nuts. I just turn it off. I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to listen. You, I completely you, agree. You want about 15 30 seconds? I, I would go 15 seconds. If you're doing 30 seconds at the 15 mark, you drop it down and it goes underneath the voice. That's why it was better too when we moved to the uh, live streams that we put at the end of the podcast so we could actually mm -hmm. do like full fan intros. For a while, I had to like cut the 15 seconds or 20 seconds. I was like, sorry guys, <laughs> here it is. Like, that's it. Yeah. And with soundboards, I feel like, I don't know, if you rely on it too much, it almost becomes like the wacky morning DJ show where it's like, Whoa, push the button, yeah, yeah. make a noise. But, yeah, it's like, oh, well, we came here to watch you and listen to you, not necessarily this uh, pre-recorded thing. So, Although when someone curses, you can always put in a little. Uh, we, we, ha we have the uh, achievement. Oh, yeah. when, when someone says something they're not supposed to. Ray just goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next slide is um, regarding the recording hardware and software that you use. Uh, we're going to have to blow through these pretty quickly. No. Sorry, you don't get to too much of a soapbox. But, oh, sorry, um, I can't go on to everyone about XLR connections <laughs> and USB ports. Uh, yeah. the, so, but there's two big differences between um, doing an internet broadcast and studio broadcast, and that's basically just in terms of the equipment that you use. So microphones, you usually have um, headsets, built-in microphones, USB microphones. Try to go with a decent headset or USB microphone. I know you use built-in microphones. I know Mac has good built-in microphones, but... For everyone else looking to do a podcast, if you can forego using a built-in microphone, definitely invest in a headset. I'm leaning towards an external mic too. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, or an external I microphone. Completely agree. Yeah. We have a we have a guest who comes on regularly. His name sorry, is, Goose. Uh, tough talk, Tony Spencer. I hate you He's all. a grand <laughs> champion. He is awesome to listen to. He's he brings all you know his blustery wrestling heel stuff. It's great. He doesn't turn off the sounds on his MacBook. So every time someone <laughs> makes a little comment, like we use the Skype chat to keep like con comments private, like, oh, hey, you know, we're going to wrap up in five minutes, blah, blah, blah. You can hear every single time a message pops or when the phone rings. And I was like, Tony, I love you. Please turn it off. So if, 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 if you're listening, you're just Tony, getting if, started if, if you're, if you're listening, Tony, uh, uh, please mute your Skype sounds and please don't break me. I will say if you're looking for a relatively cheap alternative to an external mic and you're worried about pricing, um, a Snowball is, a, 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 you guys may have heard of it, it's a common microphone, it looks like Snowball, it's silver. But uh, that's what Michael and I recorded a lot of internet box episodes on before we started using uh, setup mics like these. So that's a pretty good alternative and you get pretty good sound quality. If you have Rock Band, that uh, USB mic is actually really good. But you have to be really it careful because if you don't talk directly into it up here, your sound goes to bad places i it's actually not that bad because because you have to stay close so you it kind of keeps keeps it in your head jack actually used to use a headset and I, it, it was fine because it sounded okay but he never quite got the fact that you could hear him when he drank so let's say he pours himself <laughs> a drink and so he's like so the guest would say something and be like oh yes point i'm making oh this is excellent and this is really informative his response would be Mm. Oh, yes, that was very interesting. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, like, when I started editing the podcast, I, I, I had to have a, have a come to Jesus talk with Jack. I'm like, Jack, I love you. You, you are one of my favorite people. Here's stuff we need to avoid. Yeah. And that, the drinking was one of them. I, I almost got him off ums and likes and okays. Almost. Yeah, I've, I've almost uh, made everyone actually plug their XLRs back in when they go up to use the restroom in the live streams. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's been times when Gavin and Bernie come back, I'm like, oh, the, can you plug in your microphone, please, so I can adjust your levels? Thank you. Yeah. So, of course, if you do your research, you'll find most of the stuff that's up here, uh, different microphones, different mixers, uh, different recording software. Um, this is just kind of an overall list or, of types of software that you can find. Sorry, I am going to have to skip your part. It's cool. Internal mics are okay for starting. If there's a question that comes up, then you can... <laughs> just okay. saying... Uh, Garage Band rocks. Just yeah. don't type if you have an internal mic. That's a no-no. Oh yeah. Or you just, if you have a second computer or a phone, use that instead. Yeah, absolutely. You can sign the multiple places with Skype if you use Skype for your recording, by the way. Uh, finishing touches, uh, audio uh, mixing and rendering. Uh, you can use GarageBand. You can use Audacity. You can use Soundbooth. There's a uh, few uh, programs out there. A few of them are free. Uh, some are professionally that you use to pay for. Um, audio files and formats, most of the things you're going to be working with is MP3s or M4As if you decide to do an enhanced podcast. Audio 3 tags and metadata is actually pretty big, a uh, pretty big thing, especially if you're trying to get your podcast out there on the um, podcast crawlers and spiders. Make sure you have ID 3 tags that actually inform people of what your content is. Make sure you have podcast art in your uh, MP3s as well. That way, when people go and see it on their player, it's like, oh, that's the thing I'm listening to. It, it's a brand recognition thing, essentially. 
I was just going to say, since we were talking about uh, audio quality as well, if you're looking for a program to maybe if you guys are recording and you feel like the audio quality is not too great and you're looking for programs to kind of fix it um, afterwards, after the production, uh, Soundtrack Pro is a really good noise reduction that you can do. You can set a sound print and then reduce it uh, in the entire file and it sounds a lot cleaner. Also, Audition, you can bring in your file into there if you have it and it has a really good declicker and that's gotten rid of a lot of our mic pops that we've had or any, uh, again, when people pull apart their XLRs, you'll get a quick like, and that'll get rid of it. I was just so happy. I did my first like workflow entirely in Audition uh, a couple of weeks ago. Like, How'd it feel? Well, I, I'd been using Audacity, and you know, Audacity's great, but I'm like, eh, I kind of want a non-destructive uh, editing, and I'm like, well, and I just paid for Creative Cloud, so I'm like, I want to use like more than just Photoshop when I have Creative Cloud because I'm like not worth it. <laughs> and so like, I'm like, okay, I am going to use Audition next week. <laughs> Yeah. So like it, I kept putting it off, and I had kind of both of them running at the same time. And then finally, a couple of weeks ago, I'm just like, screw it, let's go, uh, let's do it live. And uh, it actually worked out really well. So yeah. I'm I'm all, I'm happy. Nice. One last thing on this: there's a shoutcast called Five Reasons Why Your Podcast Technically Sucks." If you are a podcaster or you want to do podcast, everyone needs to go see the shoutcast. There's a lot of good information regarding podcasting in terms of audio quality that really will help you get your podcast. And it helped me when I first started podcasting. Uh, last slide before we take questions. So if you guys want to start lining up, we will be taking questions um, as we have about 15 minutes. Um, publishing your podcast, where you're going to publish it, um, whether you want to establish a website or if you want to use a free blog uh, software like WordPress.com or um, Blogspot, any of those uh, blogs you can uh, use. And they have um, hosting sometimes that comes with them. Uh, you can also look into doing something like Libsyn, which is a uh, monthly subscription for a certain allocated, cal allocated space. Um, Libsyn is a very good service. Uh, we used to use it, I think. That's what we used to have all of our podcasts, well. too. Yep. Yep. And then we'll just embed the links into our website. Yep. And there's some hosting platforms out there that give you unlimited space of storage, so you can use that as well if you decide to actually go with a self-hosted website. Um, subscription methods, whether you want it to be on iTunes or the Zoom Marketplace or other podcast crawlers. Most people, what they do is they submit it to the iTunes store, and most other podcast crawlers will pick it up automatically. Um, iTunes is probably the biggest podcast fetcher of all the services out there. We did Zoom once. It took six months for our podcast to get on there. Yeah, we Art just recently did that with Internet Zoom. Works. Yeah. Like, I, I have a friend who, like, hey, you should totally get your podcast on Zoom. I'm like, okay, cool, we'll do that. And I don't know how many times I submitted the uh, the, the feed, yeah. and it just it never went through. And I'm just like, okay, uh, we're going to stick with this other way. Yeah, yeah, I feel like iTunes is really good and, and receptive yeah. about uh, incorporating a lot of new uh, podcasts, because I know I've had friends who've started, uh, especially with Internet Box coming out and Richard Teeth, they're like, oh, let's start it, because my friends hang out and they talk about the same things that you guys do. Um, but they already are being hosted on iTunes, and they've only had like 10, 15 episodes or something, and they don't have that great of an audience in comparison to what we do, but iTunes is all for it. Yeah, so. It's really easy, like same day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they, they update, like we did not want to lose when we did our name change from late night Jenga jam to glib shark we didn't want to have to make people resubscribe because asking people to subscribe and click that one button is already more than more than we can ask of you and we really appreciate when you do that so to ask them to do it again it was like eh, we really don't want to do that so they actually updated within a few hours uh, the art the name everything just updated uh, and went through and I'm like okay this is gonna be a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be <laughs> yep all right, so that pretty much wraps up for all the slides that we had. If anyone has any questions and answers, go ahead and line up. We have about 15 minutes. Um, I'm not sure how quickly they're going to kick us out because this is the last panel, but um, go ahead and start lining up. I want to answer the question from the guy with the grip ball fleshy. <laughs> I hope it's for me. The grip ball fleshy, that is. Well, um, it's actually just kind of a general question, but maybe I'm betting Lindsay will probably be best at it since she oh. said she's tech. So. Um, I'm looking at microphones right now. Oh, yeah. So I have a Yeti right now that I've been using for – other stuff. Nice. Um, I know. I was going to say you've just made I, uh, friends with I Dustin. Use. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I really like the Yeti, but I'm looking at the AT2050 because that's what Gus uses. I was wondering, has that changed at all? And do you know what Achievement Hunter uses for their mics? Uh, they use the same thing, actually. Um, we moved over for the live streams, too. We use the Sennheisers that are more, uh, they're a little more directional, but they also pick up more room tone than our previous mics. So I think, honestly, the better quality is what you have going on right now. I, that's the best quality that I've found, I think. And that's what we actually started using Internet Box right now, too, once we moved on from the Snowballs. And that's what I've been using so far, and I like it a lot. I haven't varied from it, so I would stick with it. Okay, so you're saying either the Yeti or the AT2050? AT2050, sorry. Okay, I was like, yeah, okay. sorry, I should have clarified. Okay. I have not used a Yeti, but not Okay, yet. thank you very much. No problem. Hello. I had a question about analytics. Yeah. Do you guys have any tips, especially if 
through services like iTunes a way to track that data of who's actually we, listening? Our hosting is done off still it's still done off TalkShoe. Like even though we don't use the service to actually produce the podcast anymore. They are really have been really really good about hosting our MP3s as long as it doesn't get like crazy big and if it does we just split it up and there's some a lot of really easy reporting tools at least on that site uh, I'm sure that I you could probably pull that data from iTunes somewhere I just don't know where. I, I I think for iTunes they don't really do the statistical tracking as you can get with a lot of more website analytics so mm -hmm. if you go with a self-hosted website um, like if you do DreamHost or HostGator they have uh, onboard analytics for your site, and they will actually track the downloads usually on a day by day basis. If you use something like Libsyn, they have their own. I was stats. just going to say, Libsyn does have a tracking. Yeah. That's what we use. Libsyn has, has its own tracking um, API as well. So it's, it's going to be wherever you host your podcast. It's not going to be iTunes that you're going to be relying on. It's going to be the hosting service for your actual uh, audio download. Okay. Thanks. Good day. Um, just two quick questions. Um, one, what's a really good effective way of um, marketing a podcast or getting it out there? And also, what's another good way of getting good feedback from other podcasters and um, more professional podcasters, I guess? Well, one way to get really <clears throat> good feedback is to listen to other podcasts yep. and find out, oh my God, I hate it when they do that. Or that's really annoying. Or, hey, that's a really good idea. That's yep. what we've done a lot. We've listened to the RT podcast a lot. It's really interesting that RT podcast you know, exists, and all of a sudden the Griff Ball Hubcast exists, and then the RT podcast starts doing live streams, and then the Griff Ball Hubcast starts doing live streams. Are you stalking us? So <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, there's nothing wrong yeah, with I came in late to the game, apparently. <laughs> yeah, you copied us. We, we copied hey, them. Hey, we did one a long time ago. We, we've been live streaming since the beginning. <laughs> Two thousand seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, uh, the the yeah. thing was, it's like with TalkShoe, it was really awesome because it was a live method before a lot of other live methods. The pro and so in the moment, it's great because you could call in and talk to someone. Like we, I know we had an episode when we had Bernie on, and the site was having horrible issues. This was like 2007, 2009. And so this was the forum that he used to come out and address the audience. And uh, it, was, it was a watershed episode. And, the, and one of the reasons why it worked so well was because all you needed was a telephone. Yeah. The problem is that he, uh, late, listening to an episode later on, it's a phone call. Yeah. So listening to a phone call for an hour is, is tedious. And you only really do it if you really, really like what you're listening to. So uh, we found that that making the quality, qual ah, audio quality a lot better and trying to keep, you know, solve the puzzle of how do we still continue to do it live. Because it was never really an option to do a, uh, to do just, you know, record and then, and then put it out. We, we always want to be live. And was, oh, sorry. No, no, it, because like, like you said, it's, it's a really great way. A, a lot of times if we call someone out, they'll call into the Skype. Because a lot of them are our friends. So we'll like be, oh yeah, that Izzy, she's a real jerk. Izzy's calling. <laughs> oh, crap. <Yeah>. Busted. <laughs> um, did I was, that answer your question? Or I think you had something uh, a little bit I, I different. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, okay. It is difficult to like uh, form a talk about it and a lot of community to get together and say, like, how do you guys feel about the podcast or have you listened to us? Because a lot of times it's difficult to reach out. But there is a community, especially like if you are a fan of the RT uh, page or you're on the RT page, a lot of feedback can come through there. Because I know that in the RT community, they a lot of people are inclined to go watch content that are created by other fans and people just like them. So that's where I've seen the most uh, a lot of people talking about it again. Like that's how I knew Dustin and Goose Checka and Roblox. I was like, oh sweet, like you're also on the RT community page and let me go check out your stuff. Um, but also the biggest thing that I learned, I'm, I'm sure this is very obvious, is listening back to your podcast again over and over again. And you can obviously pick out things that tech wise you're not too happy about, or like if you're anal retentive like me, you're like, oh this one sound was awful. Why? <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, and then you can also kind of get a feel for your group dynamic too and kind of work on like, oh, what, which castmates work best together? What subject material did people seem to be uh, cool talking about or felt comfortable with and what seemed to not really, uh, what, what fell flat, basically? Okay, okay so continual self-improvement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah, continual cool. self-improvement and reaching out to other communities. Um, definitely find the, f the right forums to do and the right places to do it is something that's kind of uh, a milestone in promoting your work. Yeah, I was going to ask one of your be... questions was about promotion, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, in marketing, yeah. Marketing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's mostly just getting the word out to other people that are 
within the similar bubble of information that you're really trying to go for. What, what kind of podcasting are you interested in doing? Like, yeah. what, what kind of topic would you be interested in? Oh, I, I do two podcasts at the moment. I'm just trying to think of how to promote them more. Um, so, like, we've got Twitter, we've got a Facebook, we've got a, we've got a web page. Um, so, I do one comedy podcast and one rooted community podcast. So, the rooted. Uh, the oh, rooted, okay. Yeah. Rooted, that's, so that's the Australian rooted. community podcast and yeah. just trying to promote those things. Um, just trying, I guess, build the, the listener base and what else can I do to um, grow those communities and, and nurture them, I guess. It's on Rooties. You decided to talk about Griff Ball, even for yeah. just like two <laughs> minutes. So, yeah. And you're networking right now. Sent there me a go. message <laughs> saying, hey, Goose Checker, we're talking about Griff Ball for two minutes. I can guarantee you that I would at least retweet that. I might even write a post about it. Okay. Especially if you're with Rooties. I didn't, I didn't realize that, and I know from obviously Rooties work. But uh, yeah, especially in the Rooties community, people will absolutely recognize, oh, Rooties, I know this, and they'll okay. go check out your stuff. So yeah. of course, if everyone helps everyone, then yeah. it continues yeah. to grow. Yeah. 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 And of course, Facebook, Twitter, do the social media yes. stuff. If yeah. and down, especially, again, with Rooties, I don't know, have you tweeted RT podcast in the middle right. of it? Like, absolutely, you should be like, yo, I also do this podcast. Check it out, and people will see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Or helpers. <laughs> so my friends and I have been trying to do stuff as far as podcasting is concerned, but a lot of the time we'll end up going into it like, okay, so let's do it. Let's talk about Halo and, you know, let's keep it Halo oriented. And 50 minutes into it, we'll end up, yeah, so Chewbacca's great, you know? <laughs> and a problem that we have is that we go off on mad tangents for seemingly no reason, and I can't really keep it on course. So I was kind of Do you want to talk about the yeah, one podcast you were not on a couple of weeks ago? From me? No, no, no Kelly. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> so I I'm going to let her tell the story first, and then I'm going to add on top of that. I was at Disneyland, and so therefore I was not on my podcast. And usually there's one person on the podcast who's like the ringmaster who kind of corrals all the, the crazy tangents and ke keeps people on track. I'm that person. I cracked that whip. So when I'm gone, it goes badly. And yeah. uh, so we had the crew on, and Dust Storm came with a guest on my podcast while I was gone. And I listened to the podcast. I'm like, oh, my God, this is awful. You would not <laughs> shut up about, like, the most inane little tiny thing. That was not me, by the way. That was the other. No, it wasn't. But that's one thing. When you're trying to keep people on task, you need to have somebody. I mean, I, I always think of Gus like this for the RT one. I was just going to say, that's, that's Gus and Bernie yeah. on RT. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to be the angry person, although when my people go off topic and I'm, like, keep trying to redirect them, just keep at it. Like, if that's you, you and your job, then you just kind of keep redirecting them. If you want them to stay within the Halo sphere and then kind of go a little too far out, um, feel free to crack the whip and bring them back. I mean, literally, something as blatant as, okay, so back to Griff Ball or mm -hmm. back to what we were actually talking about, that's totally okay, especially if the people you're on are being very obtuse and stubborn. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, it does feel like, you do feel like a dick when you're like, okay, guys, seriously, let's get back to this. But, yeah, I mean, even people find that funny sometimes when you're like, shut the fuck up. Okay, back to what we were talking <laughs> no about. No one cares. Quick. Let's move on. Yeah, enough. <laughs> it but, also helps when going. you have, like, when you have your finger on the button and you can just disconnect them. That helps. <laughs> just unplug their mic. That, that's a level of authority that you can't buy. Yeah. Boot. Yeah. It also, uh, going along the, with the ringleader, too, if you have a person in charge, I, which I highly recommend, it's usually good to have one person who has a set agenda and is okay with telling everyone that they need to move on. But what also really helps, especially it sounds like in your case, I would absolutely lay out what subject material you're going to speak about each in each episode and then just brief everybody beforehand. We'll do that with Internet Box. I mean, and we're like the most sporadic people ever. But we'll still beforehand be like, okay, we need to touch on this, this, and this. As long as we get this talked about, yeah. we can talk about whatever else. But, yeah. yeah, we're almost the exact same way. Even though we are more griff ball topical, you know, I'll have a sheet with me that says, okay, we need to talk about these four things. If nothing else, in the next 60 minutes, these four things need to get across. Right. And it's not, it's not something that you want to necessarily kill the mood. Sometimes, no. sometimes depending on the length of it, you just want to say, okay, guys, wrap this up. Um, but there are times where you have to say, okay, stop, we're moving on. Yeah. And, yeah. again, like they said, don't be afraid to be mean about it. If you have to move on, if there's, well, like I said... To, a, you don't have to be mean, no. but you can be Gus-like and you know, make fun of <laughs> people who are... Yeah, very frown. <laughs> if you can see them, start frowning at them. Um, but yeah, totally be okay to just kind of make a joke about it and go, okay, seriously, we're getting back to what we were talking about. If, but if you want a totally sporadic podcast that goes from Halo to, to Star Wars, that does, that's not that really big of a, you know. Not a big gap. And everybody loves Star Chewbacca Wars. Chewbacca loves Halo. <laughs> yeah. Ch yeah. Chewbacca's right. a goddamn camper. <laughs> All right. We have a legitimate strategy. Shut Shut up. Up. <laughs> All right. Did that answer your question? There was one other thing that I kind of wanted to just mention a little bit. Is you guys kind of talked about like throwing names out there, but to that end, we tried to record this one time, and my friend Robert would not stop talking about 
Like, not necessarily just talking, but quoting Rooster Teeth. We recorded for 45 minutes, and about 36 of that was him quoting Rooster Teeth. I would say that's an example of a bad tangent, maybe. Yes, yeah. that's, that's oh, a bad tangent. When they, your entire content is from another podcast. Well, like, there was a, uh, the Rooster Speed community uh, recently opened up their server to a bunch of, uh, to a bunch of new, new people. Like, hey, we're going to welcome this new group of new users, and they're going to get to talk to these established, uh, you know, Rooster Teeth, ro or Rooster Speak people on, on a, it's like a TeamSpeak server. Yeah. And, like, I stopped in there, like, it was like the second night it was live, and it was nothing but tease it, and no way in, no way out. <laughs> Literally, for hours, very loudly. <laughs> and I'm like, it, 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 it was, it, it was great because, well, it was great for them because they got to have fun, but it was awesome because <laughs> it, the server has different rooms, so it's just like, okay, I'm going to hang with the new people. Okay, I'm done hanging with the new people. On to the League of Legends room or whatever. So that, that, that really helped, but yes, that, that can be a problem. I would not, write, I, I would not invite that person back. <laughs> like if, if it, unless it's like your mom or somebody. If that's all they're going to do and they don't take your feedback about, hey, you know, we really need to kind of more of our own content, if they can't hear that kind of constructive criticism, I wouldn't invite them back. Because, I mean, this is my podcast, this is my baby, this is my time, my effort, my work, God, the editing. You know, if you're not going to do what I ask you to do within kind of the very squishy rules that we have, if you can break our rules, you're not coming back on the podcast. Because that means you are way outside the box. I love the phrase squishy rules. Squishy rules. <laughs> I'm stealing that one. That was awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Hi. Okay. Shotgun round. We have about four minutes left. <laughs> Lightning round. Okay. Um... My question has to do probably more towards Lindsay because the RT podcast does go on YouTube. And my question is, would YouTube for like a video podcast be a good way to start out uh, a podcast? I know the creatures do it, and I know a couple other. Yeah, I was just going to say the creatures people. is the best example I can think of of people that house on YouTube. Um, the only times that we've had streams on our YouTube channel so far is uh, when we were filming uh, Immersion in Atlanta, and we had one more. And for the life of me, I cannot think of it. RTX. I'm almost positive. Yeah, I was like RTX, obviously. Sorry, duh. But uh, <laughs> I think it was, was a, that current event, right? Yeah, right. Um, E3. I'm pretty sure when we had the announcement for Xbox One is when we uh, also hosted on YouTube. And but other than that, we actually have hosted through our site individually, and we use a program called Wirecast. Um, which you can have on your computer and it automatically streams through whatever uh, hosting site that you deem so we just went ahead and had it pull through our site directly before we used to do Twitch but you can't do embedded podcasts which is why we stopped and obviously that's a big pull for Rooster Teeth is that we have our M4As have uh, embedded links and you can click on them and of course with our sponsorships now it'd be nice uh, for people to visit the websites of our sponsors so yeah um, I, that's how we do it I I would say starting out it might not be the best idea because especially with YouTube there's just so much going on in YouTube and even with live streaming on YouTube I've seen that there's just like people live streaming in their bedroom for whatever reason <laughs> why not <laughs> but yeah I would say maybe try uh, try going on something like Twitch are, are first. you sure that was a podcast yeah right <laughs> <laughs> I ended up on <laughs> chat roulette my bad oh my. That, that was a different kind of broadcast entirely. <laughs> that yeah. was chat roulette All right. thanks for the question cool thank you Thanks, guys. Great panel. Um, just had a quick question. You talked about live streaming a video. Is there a camera that you recommend that for live streaming? I was gonna say That's we, more than Lindsay, sorry, yeah. I was gonna say we use uh, Sony Handycams. Okay. <laughs> they're not like they're not crazy awesome. The the most expensive camera that we use is the Red One for the green screen shot, which you can absolutely tell the odd video quality is completely different. But that's so that we can key during the stream. We need that camera to do so. But um, we have a perfectly fine stream. Just use it's one of those bad boys, like right there, yeah. <laughs> boosh. Um, but yeah, we still have a perfectly fine stream. And it, again, it's not like the greatest of video quality, but since it's streaming capable and we're again able to maneuver them so quickly, we have floor managers that can quickly and easily them if you try to move the red one in the middle of a podcast good fucking luck <laughs> yeah okay thank you very much we got time for two more <coughs> and by two he means everybody else in okay. line unless you guys really are right we'll, we'll, we'll go really fast we'll the go answer go, is yes go okay. question okay. lightning round okay lightning um, round this is for anyone to answer on personal experience what is the worst technical difficulty you've had to deal with mm. oh man other people's mics Joel's voice <laughs> <laughs> other people's mics <laughs> other, like you can have someone who calls in and you're really interested. Like, uh, there's a couple of musicians that I absolutely love, but whenever they call in, they're always calling on their phone and they're always like in the car or walking around. And I'm just like, I love you, but stop. Yeah. So, and, or or s people who are using, you know, their laptop mics and it's a really, really crappy laptop mic. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the biggest one. I would I would say audio quality background noise okay. is one of the yeah. biggest oh, offenders yeah. in my you book. You have someone who's really close to their mic and like. Oh. 
or really oh. far away, and you can't it's, hear them at all. <laughs> we have a company that's called the Darth Vader. <laughs> Yeah, Thank like, you. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet Megan Lara shirt, by the way. Uh, this? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm a nerd, and I know that artist. Can, can I go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> there you oh, okay. go. Oh, so um, for the like, what what really intimidates me about starting a podcast is the duration, like the time duration. Like, Thirst Your Teeth podcast is two hours, but my friend runs a podcast, and it's like thirty to forty-five minutes. So, what would you say is like the recommended minimum time you could say? I would say, so I actually did a survey for our podcast to see how long people want the podcast to be. And the average consensus was about 60 to 90 minutes is what people were really looking for in the podcast. It, uh, I know for the Rooster Teeth podcast, you've had podcasts from an hour, from podcasts at two and a half hours. Say, we started in an hour, and it became an hour and 15 minutes, became an hour and a half, yeah. it became a, a two good, hours. A good target uh, range, I think, for most people is an hour to an hour and a half. And pe people are a lot more forgiving about going overtime on podcasts, especially because they go in with the, the understanding that it's going to be a lengthy discussion, and that's most, it's mostly talking-based, so you know they're going to be there for a while. Whereas YouTube videos, I mean, after two or three minutes, people peace out. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say it's, yeah, pretty good. It's okay to extend it a little bit longer, or if you feel like you're going longer, probably not. The only thing I would add to that is that how much content do you have? Because if you've got 30 minutes of content and you stretch it on for an hour... That's awful. Like yeah, that's the worst thing you can do. For don't me, force that is, filler. Don't yeah. force filler yeah. on a podcast. If, if, if you, you're done talking at 30 minutes because you're out of stuff that you guys wanted to talk about, then cut it at 30 minutes. If you have to take five hours like Dusty's ones do, then you take five hours. Right. But yeah, just don't. <laughs> that don't, was only twice. Yeah. Only yeah. twice. Oh my yeah, god. And one of them was with Bernie. Like, yeah. There's a there's some guys who did a uh, panel earlier. They're called Bottomless Wit. They do their podcast is widely varied in length and they actually have everything from like about an hour to 15 minute movie reviews about uh, stuff on Netflix so it's just whatever works is really but yeah if you want a, a solid number yeah I, I would say 45 minutes 45 minutes an hour yeah 45 minutes to an hour is probably like the most common one but yeah don't don't stretch out something if it's not there right That's thank cool. you no problem. don't be afraid to cut 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 edit 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 it's true. hi guys hey. howdy hi um Okay, so I'm actually a part of an all-girl uh, gaming team, and we Twitch and we do all that stuff. And um, unfortunately, we get a lot of the uh, obsessively positive for us being females or obsessively negative for us being females online. And um, yeah, I was just wondering like how, because as of now, there's 17 of us, and we just kind of like joke around about it, and like we're... I know we don't get butt hurt when people. Do you have us. seventeen podcasters? No, there's seventeen like. Yeah, gamers. I thought the same thing too. Okay, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, just no, need no, to no, clarify no, that, no, that no, there. It's like the no, fourth mega panel. No, so, so we're actually awesome. thinking about um, doing podcasting for both League of Legends uh, and nice. for yeah, nice. and for Counter Strike because oh, those nice. are two of our like main games. Um, but we were just wondering how to like effectively like get over that. It just not being like babes on the computer because we I allowed don't to curse go on yes. I just said fuck. Uh, <laughs> I would say fuck them. Like literally, there is nothing you can do to control them. If they're in the chat yeah. box causing problems, have a mod in there. Like if they start saying the R word or stuff that's just inappropriate, kick them out, ban them. Like Instagon. Uh -huh. I mean, I as a female gamer, I I feel your pain. And yeah, don't be nice. To, and to be a girl, don't talk on, until your balls drop. Well, I'm sorry. sorry. I, you're, I got you're, some nasty sorry. comments for that one, but I'll. I'll yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to have people that are going to come by and, and really just kind of rack on your show. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of the time, you just really have to push through some of that negative feedback and really focus on the, the people that really care about your show. Yeah. And if it becomes an uh, issue, you get other people that are part of your show, you, you get them in, like, hey, we really appreciate what these guys do. Stop giving them a hard time about it. Yeah. I would say, too, also, one thing to focus on is especially like. I don't feel like I'm a woman who's podcasting. I feel like I'm Lindsay who's yeah, running yeah. a podcast. And I think it's important to focus on that. And you're like, listen, I'm doing something I love. I'm putting out content that I, I enjoy. Yeah. Mad we're all really good. yeah, you're just like, well, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, of course well, they are. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's the internet. People are going to leave negative comments about yeah. everything. And I've seen plenty where it's like, who's this C word work in the podcast? Yeah. And, but, but, you know, I'm like, that's fine. I make my content. If you don't like it, then that's fine. And I just okay. want to say it's incredibly brave. I mean, for a lot of the yeah. ladies out there, I don't know how many you know guys can really. I mean, I'm sure guys can uh, can. I'm sure it's the same for way. many dudes have had, yeah. this, had the same problem. I yeah. mean, Michael's been called several stupid things online when he first started Internet Box and uh, right. Rooster Teeth. So. But I mean, just to put yourself out there like that, 
I mean, I know the Frag Dolls do it with their streaming They're thing awesome. and stuff like They're that. So cool. And they, they do. They take a lot of shit for We're that. Oh, you're a girl. Actually, you know, you don't actually funny. play. You know, all that kind of stuff. Fuck them. You know what? You're out there. You're doing what you love. And if people can't realize that, then they're not worth your time. Yeah. They really aren't. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Oh. We've gotten the note to cut off, so unfortunately. Just two more. Let's all right. Go. Do we do two go. more? Or do we we do okay. Two more. Uh, we're allowed two more. Last one. What's the best way to maintain flow in a podcast? Like uh, Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> if that's a flow of urine, absolutely. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say the professional answer is having a good host that will dictate the flow of the show and make sure people stay on topic, making sure those bad tangents don't happen too often. And Thank you, yeah. Dustin. Definitely a good host. Like <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that was the professional answer. <laughs> okay, hey, yeah. awesome question. Yes, all right. great. Great, right, lightning right. round. Last question. It's all on you. No one's – no pressure. Do it. Hi. All right. Currently, I record a podcast sometimes using Skype, and I use CallGraph for it. Is there anything kind of better? Because I like it because it separates the caller and the callees in different channels, which makes editing a lot easier. But is there anything better that you should, could suggest so for Skype recording? I use a program called MP3 Skype Recorder. It is free. Uh, mm -hmm. It has your track and the Skype, uh, all the guests on a separate track. So mm -hmm. you do have those separate tracks. Um, it records uh, joint stereo, 128 kilobits per second. Mm -hmm. So it's it's decent quality. It's not like the best like studio quality that you're going to get, but um, it's, in my opinion, a lot better than call graph. Okay. Yeah. I, well, for those reasons, you. I don't use Skype to record. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, uh, I don't. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Woo! Thank All you, guys. Thank you, everybody.